there, we're inside of St. Peter's Church. This is going to be the last day that anyone from the public is actually allowed out here, or allowed in here, because they will be uh, demolishing it uh, very shortly. So these may be some of the last images someone ever gets to see of the inside interior of the church. So we only have about 10 minutes to do any filming inside of here. I want to take a quick look around and search ways. Right here, this is where the old organ used to sit. Now that organ has been taken away to, I believe, Nova Scotia to be restored. But you can imagine there's a lot of church services that happen inside this building. This building was built in the 1880s and now this is the second building from the 1880s that has been uh, destroyed in the city of St. John within, you know, the last couple of years. Centenary Church, or the Gothic Arches as you may know it, was demolished and now there's an apartment there. So, just the fate of many of the churches that we have here in the city of St. John, unfortunately. Here's the rope. We're ringing the old bell. So the old bell was taken out a few days ago. Doesn't ring anything anymore. So now let's step inside St. Peter's Church for the last time together. There's not much left of St. Peter's Church. This is a church that stood here since the 1880s, and yesterday is the day they began the demolition work. It's only going to take a few more days, and there will be nothing left of this church, and then they'll be taking the rubble to the landfill and the metal for scrap. Uh, I was happy to see that coming here, there are some local people, they're getting little bits and pieces of the church as memento, so at least part of the church will remain here in the community. That there is the top cross that was on the top part of the steeple. So, luckily that's being salvaged. He's gonna use that. Uh, it's not just gonna be going to a scrapyard. Right here behind me is the Divine Mercy Catholic School. It's a private Catholic school and it's going to remain, although it is attached to St. Peter's Church and it's being demolished, they are going to separate it and this should remain as a school. Uh, this also used to be where the priests, the Redemptorists, lived. Over here through the trees, that's where the nuns were living. Coming to the back of the school, into the playground, you can see there, the back of St. Peter's Church. Not yet brought down. We have these statues on pillars. And here you'll see there's names to people that are buried around here and died in the 1840s. It's interesting to see that there's a school built beside or on an old cemetery, and the play area 
is here where there's a graveyard. The demolition still ongoing. This piece of ground here is a cemetery for the Redemptorist priests. And these are their headstones. There's around 46 Redemptorists that are buried here. Now the Redemptorist priests, they're in order within the Catholic faith and they are missionaries. So these men would have come here to do missionary work in the Atlantic provinces. The graveyard and school will remain. Also, I believe this recreation center is going to remain as well. And these recreation center and also the ballpark just across from the church, it was these men, the Redemptorists, who wanted to bring the community together and give the less fortunate people that lived in these areas a place to go, have fun, sense of community. I hope that they're not forgotten for their contributions to this area of Canada and to the city of St. John. Here are some of the names. Thomas O'Brien, passed away in 2007. And as you go back, the graves become older and older. And here, the oldest I could find, 1890. I think it's really fitting to be here on a day when it's raining. Because if you're going to tear down a historic landmark and a church, you might as well do it in the rain. This here is the grandstand for the baseball field right beside St. Peter's Church. This field was used quite a bit in the early days and they would have exhibitions. Many, many games were played here. They had a huge grandstand along the back and I hope it lasts as a reminder that this church really was a focal point for this community. A lot of people would come here. It was just a meeting place for like-minded people to get together, sense of community. And today, while filming, I seen so many vehicles coming by to take a look at the church. I've talked to many people that had been altar boys at the church, had attended the church, and you can just imagine the amount of weddings, funerals, baptisms, services that took place here. And it really does uh, hit people to the core. I know a lot of people are sad to see this building go, but I'm glad that there will be these little reminders, mementos that people are hanging on to that will still be here for hopefully generations to come. One piece of St. Peter's Church that's going to be preserved is found here on the Kingston Peninsula at St. Bridget's Church. Now St. Bridget's was constructed in 1871 and predates the construction of St. Peter's by about 10 years, but it was used by the Redemptorists as kind of a summer getaway from St. John. They had a camp here called Our Ladies Camp, which they would bring underprivileged and needy children from St. Peter's to here in the summertime. This camp was, if you could pay, that was great, but if you couldn't afford it, you could come to the camp for free. The property that St. Bridget sits on used to belong to this family, Etchingham. So they owned the property originally, and they were the first ones to put a small chapel here, and it was made out of logs. And then in 1871 is when they constructed St. Bridget's as we know it today. The oldest grave found here at St. Bridget's is from around the 1830s. So this area has been used for burials and worship for a very long time. Uh, here, they have an addition to the church called the Redemptorist Center. St. Bridget's, the expansion, and right over here used to be the old rectory. This building dates back to the old camp days. And right here along this tree line, there were two bunkhouses. Uh, Our Lady's Camp operated from 1939 until 1964. And I've talked to a few people that went to camp here and they said that they really enjoyed themselves. This is a spire from on top of one of the steeples at St. Peter's. 
and over time they dropped them down until they eventually got rid of one and this is the top spire of the one that they completely removed and right over here they have a memorial plaque this steeple was donated by St. Peter's Church in St. John to the parishioners of St. Bridget's in 2006. St. Bridget's had been a mission of St. Peter's Parish since 1884 under the ministry of the Redemptorist Order. Having a part of St. Peter's Church permanently displayed here at this parish signifies the unique bond which existed between the two parishes. Uh, I think it's really great that a small piece of St. John history can be preserved here on the Kingston Peninsula. Uh, I know that the other spire was basically completely destroyed during the demolition of St. Peter's. I'd like to thank you very much for watching and if you're ever out here on the Kingston Peninsula maybe you'll come here and have a little look at uh, what remains of St. Peter's Church.